Hey, everybody, and welcome to game day. This is Hondo Carpenter from Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. It's great to be with you this morning or whenever you're watching. I apologize. You could be watching in the afternoon, but it's good to be with you. We're going to cover some really important ground uh, today as we get ready for kickoff coming up here shortly. But I want to dig in with you on a couple of things. I, I want to address the quarterback situation, how the Raiders got here. What's the thinking with inside the organization? All of that. I want to address that. And then I also want to address, and remember, 99% um, of Raider Nation is amazing. You guys are fantastic. You're smart. You know the game. Um, I was talking to a journalist uh, yesterday and they were talking about the fan base of an NFL team they cover. And I said, man, I, that's that's not like covering the Raiders. They know the game. And I appreciate that about you. And I've had several of you ask me the same question. Now, I'm not God. And trust me, I know that. <laughs> um, and so when people question me, I have no issue with that whatsoever. None. Doesn't bother me in the least bit. And so we're going to get into what happened and in, uh, in the quarterback situation. We're going to talk about what the organization thinks about Aiden O'Connell. I think that's going to be super important. But then we're going to talk about Rich Bisaccia and Josh McDonald, uh, Josh McDonald, Josh McDaniels, because a lot of people have been asking me a specific question that I feel like is really germane and I want to address it for you. Then we're going to talk about what to expect in today's game. The Raiders <clears throat> last year, now let me just say, I've said this multiple times. You've heard me ask Josh McDaniels about it in a press conference. The video's up on our, we've posted the videos. But one of the biggest reasons that Josh McDaniels took the Raiders job was because he wanted to coach Derek Carr. There were a lot of places he could have went, and he wanted to coach Derek Carr. Nothing wrong with that. He liked Derek. And I can tell you right now to this day, there is no animosity between Josh McDaniels and Derek Carr. I also want to just quickly address one thing. Everybody's sending me comments. Did you see what, how Derek played or when he does good or when he does bad? Derek's not the quarterback here. So I don't have any comment. Okay. Do I like Derek? Absolutely. Do I consider Derek Carr a friend? Yeah, I do. Do I think it was best for both parties that there was a divorce? 100%. But I'm not talking about, I'm talking about Derek today because it's historical, but I'm not talking about Derek where he is today. I wish him nothing but the best. And if you're a Raider fan that, that didn't like him, wish him nothing but the best. He did nothing but represent your, your team well. And if you're somebody that liked him and you, you're mad at the team for getting rid of him, I don't blame you. You're welcome to any opinion. Just like people that didn't like him, you're entitled to that opinion. But he's not here. So what he's doing there is, is great, and, and I hope he's well, but it's not germane to what I do. So I, I stop. Do I know what he's doing? Of course I do. I cover the NFL. And so because I cover the NFL, sorry, I'm trying to turn my phone off. And because I cover the NFL, I know what he's doing, and I hope he does well. Hope he does well. Want him to do well. I got a lot of people that I know, and I'm always hoping that they do well. So they came here, and it didn't work. And I wrote a long-form article about going inside the divorce between the Raiders and Derek Carr, and I encourage you to go read it. You can Google it and find it. It went, went viral. So when they knew that a change was coming, and they knew it after they lost at Pittsburgh, you may remember the, the after the Pittsburgh game the next week, I said to Josh Jake, Josh McDaniels, Derek Carr's contract is guaranteed for next year. If you're not sure he's the quarterback and that year might move on, do you sit him? Because if he gets injured in these next two games, it's it guarantees his contract, then there's no moving on. Now, the reason I asked the question was because sources within the building told me the decision had been made. So I asked the question, and you all know what happens from there. 
Now, I'm not going to get into a ton of detail. I can't. And so if you choose not to believe this, that's fine. And I don't blame you. But the Raiders shortly had, had there was no tampering. But the Raiders believed they were getting Tom Brady and had every reason to think that. I said multiple times, and you can go back and watch the podcast or read what I wrote. This is what I love about the digital age because you're accountable. It's all there. I said, you don't get rid of a Derek Carr for a Jimmy Garoppolo. And they weren't, that was not the plan to do it. Period. Wasn't the plan. Then some things transpired in Tom Brady's life that made him coming and quarterbacking the Raiders to not be an option. That was not the Raiders' fault. I've seen some people say Tom Brady didn't come here because he didn't want to play for the Raiders. Not accurate. So now they're stuck. They had planned on Tom Brady, go out and get a rookie, develop him behind Brady, and keep moving. So their third choice was Jimmy Garoppolo. Not going to get into number two for a while. I will one day get into who number two was. I'm not getting into number two today. It, it just it, It's not something that's of importance. So Jimmy's their third choice. He knows the system. They feel they can win with him. I said multiple times, you can go back and watch the podcast and read the articles. I don't mind being held accountable one bit. In fact, got mocked for it. But if Jimmy Garoppolo stayed healthy for 17 games, Josh McDaniels would look like the genius many people in the NFL have called him. And I said, it's his team. He deserves to go with the guy that he wants. I'm not going to be critical of it. I said this. This is all out there. And, and, and that I would not have made the move, not because Jimmy's a bad person, not because when he's healthy, he's not a winner. He just can't stay healthy. I said I wouldn't have done it and still wouldn't have. But I said, it's their first year. This is the guy they want to put their trust in. I think you give them the benefit of the doubt. Remember, I would cover this team differently the first 20 games than I have since. So Jimmy comes in. They drive Aiden O'Connell, who they really like. Now, I want to make this point really, really clear. There is nobody within the organization that I know of, and I'm talking the top to the bottom, teammates, management, coaches, who don't think Aiden O'Connell has the opportunity to be super good, super, super good. Now, Going into uh, training camp, I was told by people who are the decision makers, Ryan Hoyer is going to be the number two guy. A, this is a very complicated offense. Aiden's going to have to get a ton of time to learn it. Then he went in through training camp, and he looked really good. Now, it was against some vanilla defenses, but I don't care what you say. He did look very, very good in the preseason. Everyone knew it goes through the prism of preseason. But still, he looked really good. He was the best of all the rookie quarterbacks in the National Football League. I was told after training camp, still, we were very vanilla. We're going to – we're Aiden will stay number three. We want to protect him. We want him to learn it, get the system down. Great. No issue with that. And I was told, when we think Brian can get there, I mean, when we think Aiden can get there, he'll get moved to second. Okay. So Jimmy goes down. The original plan was they're going to go with Brian for the Chargers game. Now, told this by someone in the know, in the organization, and you know some of the same people that, that, tip me off to several other things I've given you as in. So they've, they've been proven nothing but compute completely accurate. And they're in the building part of the process. So then they make the decision. All right, Aiden looked really, really good. And you know what? We may 
change a few things, whatever. But let, let's give him a try. Let's get a look and see how far along he is. So the decision's made. Now, I, you may remember, I get to L.A., get off the plane, and I had messages waiting for me. Hey, looks like Aiden's going to gonna get a shot. Internally, they had changed their mind. That doesn't mean that the organization's falling apart. It means they're not being stubborn. Okay, we gave them the reps this week in practice. We, we see some things. You know what? We're going to have to cut back, but let's just see what he has. We're early in the process, and he looked really good. Okay? And then he came in, and if you look at the stats and everything, I've talked about this previously. He actually outplayed Justin Herbert. Considering, I, I think it was seven sacks. I may be wrong on that. Some of them were him holding the ball too long. But many of them were stack box blitzes that he didn't have a shot. Did he look great against the Chargers? Absolutely not. But I thought he looked really good for a rookie in his first game. And any of you that think he didn't clearly never watched a Peyton Manning or other quarterbacks who didn't look good in their first game, especially for his true rookie campaign. But there was a lot of the offense that um, they couldn't do just because he has to learn it. I mean, go back and watch an interview with Michael Mayer uh, several weeks ago in which he talked about, I asked him, and he talked about it, Notre Dame, the plays were one word. Now you can get as many as 25, maybe that, up to 25 words for one play. This is a complicated system. The National Football League is complicated. It's a complicated system. And that's why you see Michael Mayer in his maturation. It's just a whole different world. So coming into this week, the plan was, I was told this early, yeah, I think we're going to go with a, probably go with a, okay. But as things develop, for all of you that think they're tanking, which makes no sense to me, but you're out there and I, you're, I respect you. You're entitled to that opinion. They're not. Their belief is you play to win the next game. We're not thinking about next year's draft. Now I know that's going to send some of you through the roof. That's your, that's fine. They're not thinking about next year's draft. And, and I've heard some people now sending me email, Honda, who cares if he beat Chicago? They're going to go get killed in Detroit. Yep, I think they're going to lose in Detroit right now. But I also know they're trying to get wins under their belt. Now, having said that, do I think Brian Hoyer is the long-term quarterback of the Las Vegas Raiders? No. He's a 15-year veteran. I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo is. Do I think Aiden O'Connell could be? Absolutely, I do. Do I think he's going to have to show some? Uh-huh. And we're going to get to that in a minute. So they made the decision. So I, I put that out there Monday, and I think it was Wednesday morning's podcast. I told you that I was told, no, this is up in the air now. This is up in the air. And, and Brian looked really, really good. Um, so did Aiden. There's no lack of faith in Aiden, but nobody knows the playbook on that team better than only one person better than Brian Hoyer, and that's Josh McDaniels. And these veterans, you've heard Devontae, let's win now. Let's go do some stuff now. Now, I'm telling you, and I'm talking to people privately as well. For those of you that say, well, they're going to tell you whatever you want to hear. No, they're not. There isn't anybody in this organization that's given up. But why go put Aiden in a position to fail? I'll give you an example. I have a uh, adopted son who's about to turn 15 months old, coming up here in about a week. Actually, it's a week from today. And I think he he's smart as a whip for a 15-month-old. I'm not mad at him because he doesn't know trigonometry. I'm not mad at him because he doesn't know algebra. I'm not mad at him because he doesn't know multiplication and division. And I'm not mad at him that he doesn't know addition and subtraction. There's a maturation process. Okay. Now, Aiden O'Connell is very 
good quarterback. But if you don't think he has the mastery of the system in the playbook to go out there and do what you need to do, and you don't want to kill his confidence, you don't want a fan base to turn on him and, and, and a young player to see that, then what do you do? You protect your investment. You know, Aaron Rodgers waited to play. And while I may not like some of the things friends of mine who played with him or were part of the organization told me about Aaron, I don't think any of us would disagree. He's a great quarterback with a great pedigree. There's a reason sometimes, a lot of times, quarterbacks benefit by sitting and getting some knowledge. They're going to protect him because they believe in him. Now, Please follow me along. I told you, and you can go back and watch podcasts and read what I wrote, because many of you asked me in my question and answer articles before the season, who's going to be number one or what happens if Jimmy were to go down? And I would say to you, Brian was the number two until they felt like Aiden was ready to make that step. They weren't going to put him in a position to fail. They tried him at the Chargers. There were some things that were missing, some reads that were missing, some things. That's not a bad quarterback. That's a growing. But that's just simply growth. And so I told you on Wednesday, this was the plan. But you know what? Things happen. There's practices. There's meetings. And the decision was, okay, we know our team believes in Aiden. We also know our team believes in Brian. Those players believe. Now, you may not, and that's fine. My job is not to convince you. My job is to take you inside the building and tell you what the thought process is. And then you can you can take the information, digest it, and come up with your own opinion. I respect that. Okay, we're, we're going to go with Brian. We know that Brian's cool under pressure. Brian knows every corner of the playbook. Now, I've seen a lot of people say, well, he hasn't won a game in 12 starts. Okay. I've had some people say, gee, Hondo, I know you're friends with Hoyer, but I don't think he'd be shit starting. That doesn't bother me. Those are those are legitimate opinions that you're allowed to do. That, that doesn't bother us, me or my friendship with Brian. And you don't know who I think should start. So I'll just tell you who I think should start. If you're Josh McDaniels, you don't play for the draft until you're out of playoff contention. Every year, that should be your mentality. I am playing for the playoffs until I'm out. Then I'll play for draft picks and play young guys. So I think Josh McDaniels should play whoever he thinks gives the Raiders the best opportunity to win. That is Hondo's opinion. I, I know that's what he thinks. So whoever he thinks is going to give him the best place to win, he's going to ride with that person. He's going to go with that person. And so that's how they got to where they were. Again, I'm not going to beat up on this organization for not getting Tom Brady because I know some things that happened behind the scenes that is absolutely not their fault. And I'm not going to get into why because I'm, this isn't TMZ. I'm not going to share things behind the curtain that are that they have no control over. And I do not, matter of fact, I know they wouldn't have let Derek go if they thought, okay, Jimmy's our guy. I know that. Okay. So now I'm seeing people say we should trade Jimmy. Okay. That's that's fair. But for who? And we well, say give him for a draft pick. Okay, fair. Who's going to take Jimmy's contract? Now, they own that contract. I'm not letting Josh McDaniels off the hook here. They gave that contract to Jimmy Garoppolo. They own it. It's in their lap. 100% responsible. But sometimes people will just say, well, we should trade this guy. Okay, but you got to find who wants him, who wants the contract. Are you willing to eat it? Give you another example. I told you guys I would be shocked. If Hunter Renfro was on the roster when the season started, I said to you, there's no animosity. Hunter doesn't hate them. They don't hate him. There was none of that. 
but I would be shocked. And I've told you since the season started, because people said, Hondo, I thought you'd be shocked. What happened? I'm not going to get into behind the scene details. Whenever that marriage comes to an end, I'll give you details. But until then, there's no reason to. I have so much respect for Hunter as a player and a man and the organization. Now ESPN comes out with a report and says, boy, the Raiders have been willing to trade him for a long time. Mm -hmm. Told you that. Told you that when last year ended. I also told you earlier this year, and you guys all thought I was nuts. They would like a four, but they would take a five for him. Oh, you're nuts. They can get a one. No, they can't. He's been injured. He's had issues with concussions. His value is not what it used to be. He's got a contract that the Raiders own. The Raiders are responsible for. The Raider organization gave him that contract. They own it. Is he available? Yep. So someone's going to have to come along to take the contract. But I believe the Raiders, I, I, I know they would. That's why I said I'd be shocked. And I think both parties would probably be amicable to it. But it is what it is. It is what it is. So here is exactly what I believe and know to be 100% accurate. I don't know anybody in the organization that does not believe in Aiden. And their belief is, let's protect him. Let's put him in a best spot to win. Now, some people may say, and I think this is a very germane argument, boy, you're playing a 15-year vet that even if he plays great, what does that do for your organization? It's fair. Then there are other people that say, hey, I like starting the 15-year guy. Let's go ahead and protect him. Great. But the organization's mentality, and in my opinion, I agree with this. So if you don't, I'm more than willing to say, I think this is the right, but this is opinion, is we're thinking about today. Can't worry about tomorrow. It's about today. We got to send the message to our team. It's about today, not tomorrow. It's today. And if they think that, then they've got to go with that guy. Let tomorrow sort itself out. We got to go with our guy today. Again, you may disagree. That's fine. But if the decision is, we think Brian gives us the best chance today, you go with Brian. If you think Aiden gives us the best chance, you go with Aiden. But this is a team that isn't out of the playoffs. This is a team with a lot of talent, with a defense that's playing better, that thinks, hey, we could sneak a few here, get to 10 wins and get in the playoffs. If they were not in contention, if they were sitting here at 1-5, and five, it would be Aiden O'Connell. Now, you may dislike Josh McDaniels, and that's fine. You're allowed to any opinion. I'm not going to tell you you're right or wrong. You may think he is not the long-term guy. But I'm going to tell you two things. You should be extremely grateful. Whether you love the man or hate the man, whether you think he's the long-term answer or you don't, that he is keeping the mantra up, I'm, 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 I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go forward about today, not tomorrow. I think that's viable. You may not, and I respect you for it. But my job is to give you the inner workings, to let you know what's going on. And, and I, I appreciate that about this organization. So, okay, let's be protective. And I've heard people say, no, I, I think it was my friend and colleague, Vic Taffer, the athletic, great guy, by the way. I really like him a lot. Um, that said, if he starts or not, is going to give you a reflection of what Josh thought of his performance. I agree with Vic 100%. 100%. Okay? They like what they saw, but he's not ready. Let's let, let's do a little bit. I, I I had a quarterback one time, and you guys may remember, I mentioned this to you, who was giving me an assessment of Aiden after he played for the Chargers. And the guy said to me, thank God I got to sit before I had to start. 
Because if you'd saw how bad I was, people would have ran me out of town. I thought that was brilliant analysis by that quarterback that gave me that. And so that's where the organization sits. Again, if you don't like Josh, you don't care. But you know what? I'm going to say another thing. If Josh was really trying to buy time, he goes to the rookie. But that's not him. I want to address two more things and then I'm going to get into what to expect today. Um, and I think this is very important. I've had several people ask me, and you guys know I, I, I appreciate you guys, so I try to answer a lot of your questions. Is Josh McDaniels playing for his job this week? No. I fully expect Josh McDaniels to be back next year. Fully expect it. In fact, someone said to me, do you see any scenario in which Josh would get fired? Yes, but it's 5%, if that. And it's something really wacky that I just don't see any chance of happening, but it could. I've been around the Raiders four years now. Some of you have been around for 50 and 60. God bless you. <laughs> I've never say never with this organization as far as stuff happening that you think is bizarre. But no, I don't see it. And I think Josh is very comfortable in his job. And you want to coach that way. And to be honest, whether you like him or not, he operates with integrity. I'm not going to sacrifice the future of the organization, even if I'm not here. And that's character. So for those of you asking, no, I don't think he's playing. I, I think had he lost to New England, I believe it was a, I have to be super careful here. Had he lost to New England, I believe it was a very good chance that he would not be here next year. That's why I said no matter what happens the rest of the year, that was the biggest game by far. And no matter what happens the rest of the season, I don't care if they get to 10 wins and, and somehow sneak into the playoffs, which I'm not saying I expect because I don't. That New England game was the biggest. Biggest. And so I, I don't think his job's in jeopardy, and I do think he'll be back. Now, is that 100%? No, but it's such a minute percentage. And the things that would have to transpire, um, I think, are uh, very low chances of happening. Now, I want to address another very important issue. And you can go back and again and read all this and watch podcasts. The reason I, I keep referencing that is because we've grown exponentially. Tens of thousands of new viewers and watchers and subscribers. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't hit follow, please do. Please. Yesterday alone, we had 15 pieces of, of Raider content, all of it 100% free. Don't pay people for what we give you for free. And you say, well, Honda, well, how do you guys keep it free? Well, first of all, I work for a great company, and that's the plan. But number two, when you guys subscribe and, and follow and read, we're able to do that. This is, uh, a very, I guess there's two more points I want to make because I want to address Rich Passaccia and Josh McDaniels. I also um, want to address the trade deadline and then what to expect. So let's do the trade deadline. A year before Devontae came here, I started reporting about Devontae coming here. And I had people who mocked me for it, which is fine. I'm good with that. I don't care. But I never backed off on it. We just kept reporting and reporting and reporting and reporting and reporting. In fact, when things started to happen, in free agency, I told everyone, everyone was, why are we not doing more in free agency? Relax, some things, brewing. Bam, the trade for Devontae comes. And I said it was going to come. 24 hours before it happened, people were saying I was nuts, and then it happened. I'm the one that when Derek was gonna, clearly not going to be part of the organization, everyone says, Devontae wants out. I made it clear he doesn't want out. And then I asked him. You can go watch the video. 
I said, Devontae, as long as they get you a quarterback that you have confidence in to get you the football, do you want to remain a Raider? What did he say? Absolutely. So then rumors started coming out. He wants to be a cowboy or he's on. Let me just tell you this. Okay. And I told you, he's not going anywhere. He likes Josh McDaniels. He likes this offense. Does he want this offense to play at the standard that Josh McDaniels wants it to? Absolutely. But he's not angry. He just wants to win. And then you hear whispers, oh, Devontae Adams may want out. Trade that. Stop. I can't control what other people say. But you know what? You can. I'm tired of watching Raider Nation get abused. Some people just play it for the click, 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 click. You know what? I was retweeting people who said, hey, what happened? Earlier in the week, you said it was going to be Aiden. Because that's not them being jerks. They're asking me, what happened? This is what you said, and this is why I do this. I take you right inside the organization because I want you to see it. I want you to know what I'm thinking, where the process is coming from. Now, I had several of you, when I say several, probably three or four ask me, you know, you say the players haven't quit on Josh, but they loved Rich. Okay, I want to address that because I think that's a great question. These players, no, not these because the roster is very different. But when Rich Bisaccia was not retained, that roster loved Rich Bisaccia. There's no getting around it. They loved him. Personally loved him. 100%. 100%. Can't get around that. But... Do I think this roster loves Josh? No. I think they really respect him. I think because, but there was such a turnover from last year to this year. I think some of these guys are still learning him. And I know this, they haven't turned on him. Go watch the videos from the locker room after a win. I love talking to the players after a win and just listening to them. I, uh, I like that a lot. But watch the videos of them. They like them and they believe in this scheme. They believe this is a winning scheme. So do I think they love Josh like they, excuse me, do I think they love Josh like they love Rich? No. But I think that's still, it's a relationship that's, it's, it's like asking some guy who's been married for 80 years and a guy who's been dating a girl for 45 minutes or an hour or a, a week, do you think he loves that girl like the guy that's been married for 80 years? It's not. But they do believe in him. And I understand if you don't believe it. How do I don't believe you? Okay. I'm, I'm not offended by that. I'm there talking to the guys. I know what they tell me privately. I, and I know many of them that I have a great relationship with and tell me what they think. And I don't, I don't think they're liars. I don't think their character is that way. So I believe them now, but it's just like the Derek people. I love rich. I think he's a great man. I think he's a leader of men. I said this before. I think, Mark Davis should have given him a, you know, a two-year deal, three-year deal. So you get back to the get back to the playoffs over the next, if it's a three-year deal, the next three years, and I'll automatically extend you five with a raise. I don't think he had anything to lose at all. But I also understood and said at the time, it's his team. He's looking for something long-term sustainable, and he doesn't think that's sustainable. That's his prerogative. He's the owner. And I respect him for that. I said on Raider Nation Radio, and I've said it in, a, on, in other places, I've written it. I respect Mark Davis because he made a tough call that he believed in. You know what? Sometimes you just got to respect a person who fails, but you know what? They went on a limb and did what they thought is right. In today's PC world, 
where everybody's afraid of offending anyone. It's nice to just see somebody say, I don't care what conventional wisdom is. In my gut, I believe this. It's like if you had a general manager who allowed Twitter or polls to tell you what to do. I don't care what political affiliation you are. I am disgusted with people who don't have any type of a backbone to say, no, this may be what the crowd wants. This is what I think's right. And I'm elected to lead. Whatever. Great. Same way. And I said, Mark Davis, I respect him for doing what he thinks was best. I respect him for it. And I know we really like Rich. I'm going to tell you that was not an easy decision for him, but it's what he felt. If you want to go back and say, I think he was wrong, I think that's a very fair opinion. If you want to say, I think he was right, that's a very fair opinion. There really isn't a cut and dry here. Yeah. You may say, I think he was right, but maybe wrong in hiring Josh McDaniels. Fair opinion. You may say, I think he was right, but I think Josh is the right example. Great. I get both of those groups. I'm not calling out anybody's opinion. I'm just simply saying that was the situation. And so when someone asks me, do you think they love Josh, like they love Rich? No, but A, it's not the same team. Some of them are. But B, with all the turnover, I mean, almost 50% of the roster, they've only been here for six games. Now, that's why it's very important to understand trade deadline coming up. I've been telling you this uh, in my podcast for several weeks. The Raiders are absolutely open to trade. But it, they're not going to make a trade for the purpose of making a trade. If they're, if it's player for player, great. We're willing to do it. If it's a player we probably won't have next year, we'll take your guy for the rest of this year and the last year of a deal. If it makes us better. If it's a guy that we've got under contract long term, but we really maybe don't want him. Great. We'll take your guy for the rest of the year on the last term of his deal. Or if he's on a long-term deal, but we think he fits, we'll make that trade. Or they're willing to do draft capital only if it's somebody, because that, that draft capital, this organization, whether you like them or not, Dave Ziegler is doing it absolutely right. Let's build through the draft. And they're making a very wise decision saying, hey, we're going to build through the draft. And so if we give up a piece of draft capital, it has got to be for somebody who is part of the long-term vision here. So while I think the chances of trading draft picks is minute, it is not out of the picture if it's a long-term part of the vision. What to expect today in Chicago? The entire playbook is on the table. Entire playbook, which it was under Jimmy, to be fair. The Raiders had, I was told the by one particular person, it was the best practices that they've had here. Great practices. Now, that doesn't mean anything if they go out and lose. I've seen teams that say they had their best week of practice and lose. I've seen it. So we know that doesn't guarantee anything. But great week of practices. If you watched the podcast yesterday with me, with, with uh, Zeke Trezevant, my assistant beat writer, um, we talked about the mood in the locker room. Players were very confident, loose. Most loose I've seen them in a very positive way uh, in my four years of covering the team. Not loose as in laissez-faire, not caring, but loose. I, I, there's, they're carrying themselves with a sense of um, confidence. And so I expect the Raiders to go out and play their best game of the season. Now, could they go out and drop an egg? Yep. Sure could. But based on all the preponderance of the evidence, it's what I expect. There's some things I'm seeing that I'm going to talk about in my complete recap. I don't want to say anything right now that could remotely um, 
give out information prematurely before the game that I think if it were to get into Bears' hands would hurt the Bears. I mean, would hurt the Raiders. I'm not going to do that. I'm a professional. It's not my job. And one of the things I love being a professional member of the prof of the Pro Football Writers Association is for us beat writers, we're afforded to be there to see some things, go in the locker room, those type of things. And there are things that you learn. And part of the agreement at all of the NFL teams is you don't share proprietary information. I don't think that's unfair. If I invite you to my house for dinner, I have a right to expect you not to steal the silverware. And I don't have a problem with that. So after the game and my complete recap, please make sure you watch. I'm going to share some more information. But I expect this to be the best game the Raiders have played all year. Do I think it'll be perfect? No, because there's never a perfect football game. And remember what Don Shula told me. You never apologize for a road win in the NFL. First of all, I've told you, been told by lots of coaches, there's no apologies for a win anywhere. But Don Shula said, uh, anytime you win a road game in this league, you you, ha you steal it. You steal it. And the motto of the Raiders is just win, baby. And bam, then they get to four and three, which is where I predicted them to be at this point this year. So seven games in, I feel pretty good. I predicted nine and eight. And I said at this point, they would be four and three if they win today. And they would be. So I'd feel very confident in what I picked. I think, that, I think this team is exactly what I thought it was. But I'll get into more of the proprietary things because it won't be proprietary after. Um, after. Won't be proprietary. But until then, um, I'm going to keep some of that to myself. But I, I, I think you should fully expect a Raider win. Fully expect it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. For I know a lot of you are jaded. I've heard some one person say, Honda, you've only covered the team 44 years. I've been a fan 40 years. I get it. Last 20 years have sucked for Raider Nation. And you're smart fans. I mean, I'm from Michigan. In Michigan, dear God, everyone's asking, acting like the Lions won the Super Bowl. They go on and lost most of their games and finished – Nine and eight, they'd be like, Woo, we finished above 500. Okay, and Michigan people just love the Lions. It's like the Cubs before they won a couple of World Series. Cubs fans just love the Cubs. That's what they do, where I'm from. But out here in the desert, well, here in Chicago today, but out here, it's a different mentality. You know, if you coach football at UNLV, and you make a bowl game. You win seven, eight ball game. Your fans are happy. And they should be. By the way, shout out to UNLV. They're having a good year. Not picking on UNLV at all. But you go to Alabama and you go to a bowl game or you win seven or eight games, you get fired. Why? Different mentality. Poaches. In Raider Nation, the last two to take to a playoff game got fired. There's NFL teams. They'd probably build a statue for you. It's different in Raider Nation. That's why I love covering it. That's why I love it. That's why I love you guys. And so I think you have every right to expect to win. So I just want to tell you, I appreciate you, and I greatly respect you. And I appreciate you guys subscribing, following, watching, sharing. We're growing so fast. And it's not because of me. It's because of you. And so personally, from me to you, I appreciate you. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Remember, we're going to have a live game thread with updates going on right on our site all the time. A post-game podcast, right? I literally leave the locker room and then instantaneously come right to you to do a podcast because I think that's super important. And uh, I want to do that and I'm glad to do it.
So please make sure you're checking that out in all of our coverage. Lots of great stories up today already coming before the game and great stuff after the game. So from all of us at Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, part of the Fans for Sports Network, my name is Hondo Carpenter. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in just a few hours right after the ball game.